Hello, everybody. I'm starting into one of the last topics. It may be the last, but I may talk a little about STL after it. But the topic is graphs. And this has nothing to do with the X, Y axis type graphs. You've already seen graphs. Trees are graphs. They're a special kind of graph. The graph is a, a set of nodes with links between them. So uh, and they're, they're used everywhere. They're used in game playing programs. Google uses them. Uh, they, they should look fairly familiar to you. A graph is a set of nodes and a set of links between the nodes. And in this first uh, video, I'm going to talk only about what are called undirected graphs. So f suppose I have this particular table here. And it's, it's a table of uh, an airplane company, let's say. Uh, and it has their flights. So I'm saying uh, they're going to, they have a flight from Chicago to Boston. And from Boston to Chicago. They have a flight from Hartford to Boston. They have a flight from New York to Hartford to Pittsburgh uh, to Miami. So each place in this particular set uh, matrix is a one or a zero. If it's a one, it means there's a flight, that there's a link between the two nodes. If there's a zero, it means there's no direct link between the two nodes. Now, if you have this, this, this is usually called an adjacency matrix. What it is, is it keeps track of what nodes are linked to what other nodes directly. And if you look at it, uh, it's a waste of space. And yet, it's, it's reasonable. For one thing, this matrix is symmetric. If I have an undirected graph, if there's a link from A to B, there's a link from B to A. So if you go down the diagonal, hopefully the things on both sides are the same. Uh, I hope I got it right. Uh, also, there's an awful lot of zeros there. I know it'd be a lot more zeros in a realistic case. Now, what that graph represents, I grew, grew, drew as a graph here. This is not a tree. You'll notice that there's a loop here from New York to Pittsburgh to New Orleans to Miami back to New York. That's not allowed in a tree. In a tree, every node can have only one parent, and we can't go down and then be true, uh, and somehow be back where we started. So that's the difference. Now, what can we do with the, There's other ways of storing this. I know you love linked list. This is a linked list version of it. It can take less room to store it as a linked list, especially if there aren't that many links compared to how many nodes there are. I've shown this with the names of the cities and the links, but I could show it with the numbers. So the link that comes out of Chicago could go to a number one representing Boston. And the Boston link to Hartford could be two, and to New York would be zero, one, two, three, four. In other words, I wouldn't need as much room. I would only have to put numbers in, not names. It's the same setup, but it might take less room. Now, that's the first part I want to talk about. The next thing I want to look at is how we use these. Uh, one of the principal ways we use these kinds of graphs is to find a path from A to B. And uh, sometimes it's easy. 
but theoretically, it's pretty hot. Uh, and we're going to go a little bit different now. Now I'm planning to put numbers on the connections. I'm going to say the uh, connection from Boston to Chicago is 990.8 miles. And the connection from Hartford to Boston is 101.7. So I've decided that I, I might want to find the shortest path between two places. You've already done that in the Dijkstra algorithm that you've had a few times, I think, already. Uh, the uh, see. weighted die graphs are what I'm looking at, the directed graphs. Some of the most challenging problems in computer science are graph problems. For it's the most famous of these is the traveling salesman problem. What it is, is you have a set of cities that the salesman is responsible for. And your job is to find a path from the city where he lives through all the rest of the cities back to the city where he lives. And to find it in the shortest amount of, of uh, let's say, distance. Now, that's one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is you're a cable company. And you want to lay down cable, but you don't want to waste cable. You want to find the shortest way of connecting everything with the least cable. These problems are, very, are at this point unsolvable to us for very large numbers of nodes or cities. They are what are called hard problems. The technical definition is we do not know if there's an algorithm that is polynomial that could solve these problems. We have heuristics. We have ways of getting close to answers. But when you get to 50,000 or 100,000, even our computers today can't guarantee that we can get the best answer possible. I mean, the best answer. Uh, we Someday we may know that. You may know it. I don't know when it will be solved. But we're going to look at simpler cases. <coughs> what I'm going to do is I've got a problem here, a graph. Let me get the graph. I think I lost it there. Uh, don't tell me. Ah, oh, there it is. This is the graph I was talking about at the beginning. And I'm going to ask a question. What's the path between Boston and New Orleans? Now, if you look at this graph, there's several ways to do it. We could go Boston, New York, Pittsburgh, New Orleans. We could go Boston, New York, Miami, New Orleans. We could go Boston, Miami, New Orleans. Uh, if you were, if I had asked for a path between Boston and Rio, we could go Boston, New York, Pittsburgh, New Orleans, Miami, and Rio. Or we could go Boston, Miami, and Rio. So when we look at these, we the first problems will be find a path. We don't care where it is, just find it. Then will want us to talk about getting the shortest path. Now, I'm, I have two approaches here, the depth first search and the breadth first search. The depth first search says we start with the original city and then we look at all its children. And then we take its first child and look at all its children. Then we take the first child of that that uh, the first child in that group, and we look at its children. We keep going down the graph before we go across the siblings. That's very simple to do. 
we have only all we need are two sets. One is a queue that tells us what we've done already, and the other is a set of the cities that we've already visited and already expanded. And we don't want to go back and look at them because we've already looked from there. So here's my example. Now this is with this graph here. And whenever I do a graph, I have to decide what order I'm going to look at the children. So I decided in this particular path, the children will be in counterclockwise order beginning at noon. So Boston's children are in order, Chicago, Hartford, New York, Miami, Providence. New York's children are in order, Pittsburgh, Miami, Boston. So basically, that's just an ordering. We need one. Okay, uh, we just have to pick one. So I'm starting in Boston. That means I have as children, Chicago, Hartford, uh, uh, Chicago, Hartford, New York, Miami, and Providence. So I have one, two, three, four, five children. So let's see what I did over here. I took those five children and I put them in a graph. One, two, three, four. I left out Miami. I've done that several times now, leaving out Miami. And now the algorithm says, start with the first city that you go to, the end of the first path here, Chicago. Generate its children. Make all the paths that are possible and put those paths back in here at the front of the queue. That way we're going to the children of the Boston Chicago path, not to the siblings. So the next step says, okay, we didn't get anything new when we get, went Boston, when we went to Chicago. Chicago has no other children. But now we've finished Chicago. We don't have to think about it anymore. Now we have Boston Hartford. If we look at the graph, Hartford doesn't have any children. So now we're at Boston, New York. So if you look back at this graph, We've done Boston, Chicago, Boston, Hartford. Boston, Providence is on hold. Boston, Miami is on hold. We're now working on Boston, New York. Well, New York has two new children that we haven't seen, Pittsburgh and Miami. So I'm going to add the paths from Boston to New York to Pittsburgh and Boston to New York to Miami to my queue, and I have now done New York. So the next step is I pull off Boston, New York, and Pittsburgh. But when I pull off Pittsburgh, its very first child is New Orleans. So there's no reason to go any further. I've made it. My path is Boston, New York, Pittsburgh, and New Orleans. I'm not saying that's the best path. Boston, New York, Pittsburgh, and New Orleans. Why didn't I go Boston, Miami, and New Orleans? I didn't because I went death first, uh, death first. But in some other example, the death first might be the best way to do it. It's just one of the approaches that we have. Now, breath first says, don't go down, go across. So start with Boston, Chicago then Boston Hartford, then Boston New York, then Boston Miami, then Boston Providence. And now look at the children of Chicago, the children of Hartford, the children of New York, the children of Miami, the children of Providence. And then go to the grandchildren and keep going and going like that. The only difference in the algorithm is where you put the new children in the queue. Nothing else. So I start with Boston and I put in the five places I had. Boston stuff. Chicago gives me nothing new. Hartford gives me nothing new. 
Uh, why did I put Hartford twice? That I don't understand. Uh, okay, so now I had, you, know, you notice that I put the, um, well, I haven't, I haven't done one yet. But right now, Hartford is done. So I'm working on New York. So what am I going to do? Uh, I don't know if this is the right one that I'm working on. Uh, all right. That was the Hartford one. I took Hartford out. Now, I am going to take New York now. I have Boston, New York. I'm going to expand New York to Boston, New York, Pittsburgh, Boston, New York, Miami. And I'm going to put New York in here. Then I'm going to take Boston, Miami and expand it. And immediately I get New Orleans. Now notice these children were put at the rear of the queue, not the front of the queue. That's the trick. That's how it works. Now you may have a homework on this. I'm not sure yet. But I have a what I hope is an easier homework that I would like that I'm going to give you, and this involves the adjacency matrix. Uh, what I want, I want you to think of this as an airplane system, and you're trying to find a path from city A to city B, and you have in front of you the scheduled flights of a a lot of of, of an, an airline. Now, the computer programs do this for you, but let's say you had to write the program. What I'd like to do is know, first of all, is there a direct link? No stop. One connection. If I can't find a one connection, is there a two connection? A one stop connection, in other words. If I can't find that, can I do a two stop? Uh, is there no way to get there from here on this airline? Maybe I have to get off and take a bus somewhere. So what I'm going to ask you to do is read in an adjacency matrix and then read in a pair of cities and tell me what the minimum connection is that I can make between those two cities. The cities will not be by name. They'll be by number to make it easier. And I like you to keep repeating the read in pairs of cities until the user puts in a negative one, negative one. So here is the matrix, one matrix we might use. Again, what this says is, there is a connect, a direct connection from A to B. There's a co direct connection from A to H, but there are no direct connections from A to C, A to D, a to E, A to F, A to G. Uh, to make it simple, we always put ones in the diagonal. Now, if you look at this, every place in here is either a zero or a one. So let's look and see what could happen. If we wanted to go, uh, oh, I'm going to do it this way. Suppose I say I want to get from city zero, which is A, to city one, which is B. I have a direct connection. Suppose I want to get from zero A to zero uh, city six. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, there's no direct connection. However, if you look at it, I can go A to B. And then G, uh, B to G. Uh, find me here, B to G. So one connection. If you look at 5, 3, I can't find a way to get from here to there. Now, that's okay looking at it. How do you do it with a computer? It turns out that our old friend linear algebra comes into the play. I have a smaller one here. 
No, no, I think maybe the same one. No, that's the input. That's the way the input's going to look. You notice I put the number of nodes in the first line. Now, what's the method? The method is multiplication of matrices. How do we determine if there's a path from A to E? Well, the path could be A, B, E. If it were, then A to B would be a 1, and B to E would be a 1. It could be A, C, E. Then A to C would be a 1, and C to E would be a 1, and so on down the line there. Well, if they're ones, then the, the product of them is one. And if any one of them exists, when we add them together, we don't get a zero. And if that is not a zero, then we have a path. However, this is the exact definition for the multiplication of t zero zero times t zero, uh, pardon me, row column. Place the, the f zero row times the fourth column. It's the exact definition. So all you do is take the adjacency matrix and multiply it by itself. If the adjacency matrix has a one in the, two, in the node for the two cities you care about, then you immediately just say, we got a, a nonstop connection, a one connection. If it doesn't, you create T squared. If, if the, if the, there is a non zero in the, in the node between the two, you've got a connection, one link connection. If that doesn't work, you create T cubed. Remember, you already have T squared. You just have to multiply by T. You keep doing that until you run out of possibilities, which would mean basically that you've gone through all the possible. Uh, if you have eight cities, you're not going to get there if you uh, go, uh, the, the path has to be seven or less links. So you can just plain give up after a certain point. So I put here the actual multiplication code. Uh, I know you can do it, but the rate things are going, I thought it might be easier for you if I put it down there. Uh, what it is is to compute the product of two matrices, A and B, you go row and column. And for each row and column, you multiply the corresponding element in the first matrix times the element in the second matrix. The inner uh, loop there goes through all possibilities. Now that's it for now. Uh, I may have one more uh, uh, project, but I, I'm not sure. But we are coming towards the end. And I will be getting to grading some of your stuff very shortly. Maybe this weekend I'll have a, a grading frenzy again. So we'll see you later. Uh, have a good weekend. Bye now.